What's going on YouTube? This is Coach MT in here with some uh, just some ground floor early warning services and check systems value. Now before we get into it, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below in the comment section so that we can answer. We answer all questions. It may take us some time to get to them, but we answer all questions. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram. It is at Coach MT Heard. And also make sure you join our free Facebook group. Um, we have a lot of great value in there. And uh, it, it's just it's just absolutely phenomenal, right? So I just want to give you some ground floor early warning services and check systems value just so you can understand where you are and how this process works, all right? So you're here because you attempted to go get a bank account and now you own early warning services or checks, right? And you didn't, you have, you probably didn't even know what it was. You're like, what is checks? What is early warning services? So we're here to give you some of that information just so you can feel, um, have a little bit more confidence about moving forward on getting yourself cleared up. All right. So let's get this going. So, what is early warning services? So, early warning aids in fraud prevention by reporting information associated with bank account and payment transactions to financial institutions, retail merchants, and payment processors. They are owned by Bank of America, BBT, Capital One, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo. So if you're on early warning services or check systems, there's a good chance that one of these accounts, uh, something happened at the bank in one of these accounts. So they deal with fraud. Anything that falls under the fraud umbrella can spark an investigation. We'll talk about that here in just one moment. Now with being on early warning services, it's a little bit more challenging to get cleared, especially if one of the owners of that report is 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 on that report, right? So if you 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 have some some challenge with Bank of America, you're on that report. It's a little bit more challenging to to get removed, but it can be done. All right, we have done it for plenty of clients out there. So the sec the, the second thing, the second report is check systems. So check systems is a specialty consumer reporting agency. Check Systems is owned by Fidelity National Information Systems and specifically compiles information on how consumers handle deposit exchanges at their banking institutions. So this has more to do with checks, all right? So how, how, how is that check handled when it's handed over? Is it a fraudulent check? Does it get bounced? Does it come back? So that's why it's called Check Systems. Now, both of these are consumer reporting agencies. And the most important word in that is consumer. Just to let you know, as a consumer, you control what kind of information is out there because of the consumer laws. There were laws that were put in place for the consumer to protect you against financial institutions. Because the, the job of financial institutions is to make money and they will do whatever they can to keep it and make it so there were laws that were put into place how um, commerce and trade is supposed to happen when it comes to the consumer. The consumer is you, all right? So um, in this process, I'm just gonna kind of give you some things on how you get on there and what you can do to get off of these reports. So um, this has a lot to do with anti-money laundering laws and the, the Bank uh, Secrecy Act of 1971. This was all set up to prevent fraud happening inside of banking institutions because before these laws it was really simple to, to fraud a bank out of hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars i'm pretty sure you've seen movies where they just go on a bank and you know the, the the henchmen are these really smart guys that get all this money from the bank it doesn't really happen like that but <laughs> the laws were put in place just in case something like this does happen so you, your process and the reason your bank was closed because it went through this process so if you do something with your account whether it's your fault or not the bank that the bank deems fraudulent the bank will conduct an investigation so that umbrella is very very broad it's really big of a lot of things that fall under the umbrella when it comes to fraudulent activity at the bank all right and then also since 2001 the u.s patriot act after 9 11 those those um it really, it really got tight, you know, they, they really kind of locked down on if they see anything that could could be considered money laundering. So the, the bank is doing, they're investigating 
for money laundering for eating drug drug trafficking or terrorism right so remember it's broad so if if you're above the umbrella you're great if you fall below it on, on, on any one of those those dots and i don't have a list of that but any one of those dots an investigation is 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 automatically uh started for one of these two now during the investigation the bank completes a form called the suspicious activity report it's a federal form it's called an sar so that, that form is completed right they're, they're checking for uh, money laundering for drugs or, or, or terrorism and at the investigation the bank doesn't find any money laundering activities your account is closed due to fraud or suspicion of it and you're reported either early warning services and or check systems so that's how you got there and the bank will not let you know this investigation is going on uh, as the aml law states and it doesn't have to this is why you don't know you're on early warning services or check systems until you attempt to go open a bank account there is no information given to you on that from the bank now once you're on early warning services or and or check system because that's a consumer reporting agency that's when the consumer laws kick into play okay so now don't go contacting the bank asking about this process because they won't give you any information on it also early warning services or check systems don't even have any information on this all they know is that they got an, an, an electronic notification to share your information and that is where the consumer law comes into play for you to help you get off of that process. Now, paying your balance at the bank won't get you removed from early warning services or check system. This is not a pay for deletion process. Now, I know with some uh, collection agencies or charge off accounts when it's dealing with your credit, if you call and negotiate with that creditor, you can pay less than half of the amount or half whatever is due or percentage is due. And as long as you have the right paperwork, they will uh, agree to delete. It's called pay for deletion. So you pay the $200, whatever the amount is, and they agree to remove it off your credit report. Well, it doesn't work that way through this process. If you owe a balance to the bank, paying it off would not remove you from early warning services or check system. It's, it's a, a completely different process. So if you have a balance there, you think about paying off, hold on for a moment before you do that. Now, if you wanna go back to that bank, Say, friends, you really like that bank, you like what they do for you, you had a great relationship, some things have happened, then you pay the balance because that bank won't let you come back with that balance on hand, okay? If, if, if the balance still shows. Now, arguing with the banks or early warning services or checks is won't get you removed either. It, it doesn't matter what you say, because you went through that process, because they have to fill out that suspicious activity, activity report, they will not open the account and they will not remove you from early warning services and or check system. That is not going to work, okay? So the only way to get removed is disputing it using the consumer law letter method. And that's what we have access to. That's how we help our clients get removed from the process is that we show them, hey, based on this consumer law, you need my consent to do X, Y, and Z. And so that's how we help you get removed. We even send that information to the bank as well so that if early warning services or checks is to try to contact the bank the bank has what they have and say hey the consumer law states this and 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 so that, that information uh is more likely bounced back and rest on the shoulders of early warning services and checks to clear you off of the report now it's not a one and done okay it, when you when you're challenging disputing consumer reporting agencies it's rarely a one and done process so we we have a uh, up to a, a four-step process and on that four step you can continue to sh send that information until you get the the results that you're looking for so whether you get our master class or you have us do the work for you that's how we work the process now there is an exception there is an exception if you have been a true victim of identity theft that means that you know for a fact your identity was stolen all right you want to make sure that you have you fill out a police report as soon as you find out now there is a statute of limitation if it's been over a year right uh, you find out later on um that you were a victim of identity theft and if that that time that it happened has been more than a year then you move past the statute of limitations and you won't be able to use a police report but if you find out within that year's time that it was true identity theft i'm talking about true identity theft not fake identity theft true Get a police report filled out and that process can help you because then it will show that it was not your fault at all you can send it to the bank 
you can send it uh, to early warning service and check systems to help you get yourself removed because you say, hey, I was a victim of identity theft, okay? So that is how you got to where you are. And we use, again, we use the consumer law letter method to help you get cleared up. Now, this you can get access to this information down below in the description area. We have links for everything we talked about. Again, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also follow me on Instagram at, at Coach MT Heard, all right? And then also make sure you join our free Facebook group. We can get ongoing, incredible, incredible value there. I mean, there's just loads of financial value there on the page. We have a great community growing over there. You can ask questions over there as well too. So click on the links down below. All the links for everything that we do is in the description area. Again, this is Coach MT. I look forward to connect with you and working with you and we'll talk with you soon. Hey, how you doing? This is Coach MT. I want to thank you for watching this video. Make sure you click right here to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss anything. Click right here on this link to get your process started. We have some more great free value over here for you. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.